Burns. One ring tonight who will shine the brightest. Thomas y Caballeros and those watching the Philippines. Ladies and gentlemen, it's golden time! <laughs> Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner, the challenger wearing black trunks with red. He officially weighed in at 108 pounds. In 19 professional contests, his record is outstanding. 14 victories, including five wins by way of knockout, no defeats, and five draws. Here's the two-time light flyaway champion set for title glory from Paranaque City, Metro Manila, in the Philippines, Edward El General Heno. And across the ring. Fighting out of the red corner, wearing silver with red. He officially weighed in at 107.6 pounds. It's 60 professional contest. His record is impressive. 15 victories, 11 wins by way of knockout, and only one defeat. Tonight, making his first title defense, he is the reigning, defending, WBO Light Flyweight Champion of the World from Mexicali, Baja California, Mexico, La Pulga, Elwin Soto. Clearly, he is no longer a no-name or a prospect. He has a following, and they are here tonight in Indio, Gentlemen, California. You are giving your instructions in the dressing room. I want a good, clean, hard fight. You will obey my commands at all times. Estás por eso viendo sus instrucciones en el camarillo. Go que lo wantes. All right, here we go. Lamont, what do you think the champion Soto needs to do tonight to be successful and victorious? Well, I'm not uh, very familiar with Heno, but I've seen Soto fight. I think he just needs to fight this fight. Like uh, Dougie said, that um, this guy can go 12 and he can remain dangerous for 12. Like he, he's a very, uh, you know, in shape fighter. All right, Dougie, what about on the Heno side? Hey, look at Heno's height. Look at that, that southpaw stance. Um, I think he's got uh, the reach advantage. I think he needs to use those attributes. I think he needs to make it a boxing match. He doesn't want to get into too many exchanges, at least not early in the fight. Maybe in the middle rounds, if he can soften Soto up, maybe kind of take it to him. But at least early on, make this a, a, a boxing match and, and look for counter-punching opportunities. The WBO light flyweight title on the line. This one scheduled for a possible 12 rounds. Good hands by Soto early. He got a thing coming off that championship win. His confidence is probably sky high, so it's probably a hundred times better than that fight. You could see it during the introductions. Yeah. I mean, he was doing the fist pump. He's no feeling doubt. it. He's coming out with the trunks, with the Marvel Comics decor, so he's feeling like a superhero. I love swag. I love yeah. branding. I love confidence in yourself. He's got a glow about him right now. And it's Hino's job to take that away from him, to, to slowly chip away at that confidence by not getting hit. Lamont Rose Jr. joining us here at ringside again. Big shot at the WBO Junior Lightweight title in Fresno coming up on November 9th. When you are still the hunter, oh, big combination. When you're the hunter, how is your approach to a fight like what we're seeing right now? Because you have a, a title fight coming up. Well, um, like you said, Hunter, I like, I like that. It's, it's hunt or be hunted. So, you know, going in there, I'm really going to be the hunter. Everybody knows Janelle is um, mostly a mover, a boxer. And um, we're going to turn the heat up on him. Approaching a minute to go here in this first round. Both fighters just kind of easing their, their way into this potential 12-round contest. You know, since we started kind of changing, guys, how we present boxing, whether it's on the zone, whether it's on Facebook, we've had several fighters in the Philippines, and it's an incredible way for their fans to be able to watch their fighters fight. And they watch and support their fighters. And with uh, with the, the Ring Magazine official website, that was a nice uppercut. That's some kind of too. Yeah, he's looking for it. Still, the aggressor is Soto. And he hasn't, he hasn't landed the flush power, but he's landed the kind of punches that are going to get the judges' atten uh, attention in this opening round. But I was going to say, um, as far as our, our, the traffic for the website, I think the Philippines is second behind 
America and the UK. Are they really? Yeah. Interesting. They, they love all boxing, but they certainly support their fighters. And it started with the great Manny Pacquiao, and yep. there's several more fighters now that have made their way over here to the United States. All right, first round is in the books. We're going to keep it right here. What did you see from Soto, Dougie, in that first round? You know, he was the aggressor. He, he looked out. He, he was looking to establish the pace and establish himself as the, as the boss, as the commander. I think he did that. He, it wasn't really effective aggression, but he didn't get much back from Heno. Not enough for Heno to win the round, but it was a competitive round. Lamont, this is a potentially 12-round fight. Very different than four, six, eight, or even ten. How much more difficult is it to prepare for 12 rounds? Uh, I think it's uh, more mental than anything. Uh, guys work hard in training camp, uh, whether it's 10 or 8 or 12. So, you know, it's, it's more it's a matter of pushing yourself, knowing your limits, and pushing past your limits. Lamont Rose Jr. joining us here at ringside. Commentary for our main event. Here on Thursday Night Fight, syndicated across this great country of ours, and also on DAZN for the very first time. Heno is the fighter who's used to fighting the 12 round distance. He's done it a number of times um, against quality opposition. But like we've said previously, Soto proved that he can be dangerous into the 12 round. And he's got that confidence in this fight. It was really, really interesting to watch him uh, really kind of pick Costa apart and almost shocked the world, at least the, the boxing world, that uh, was certainly not expecting that. Yeah, it happened so abruptly. I mean, it was just, you, you thought that, okay, this kid showed something by lasting the distance with Acosta. It, it, it seemed like it was going to go to the cards, and then just one punch changed everything. And, you know, Acosta and other people had said, well, it was a lucky shot, but no, he was in position. He lasted that long and stayed in that fight and, and still had his speed and his power and his reflexes, and he knew exactly what to do when he landed that power punch. Oh, Big straight hand by Soto, right here in the corner in front of us. I like how Hanno is reacting. He's not holding or running or trying to survive when he's holding now, but he, he fired back when he got clipped. And shooting that run too straight. You're exactly right, Lamont. The action really picking up here in this second round about halfway home. But I don't think there was anything lucky about that punch that earned him the WBO title at 108 pounds. Um, you can say maybe it was controversial because the referee stopped it a little too soon, but I don't, I don't think there's any such thing as luck in boxing. You make your luck. Uh, Hino continues to look at the referee. I think he, he thought there was a low blow. I don't think Soto's shots are egregiously low. What? That was a huge right cross landed by Soto. Well, what do you make of the power of Soto here through through the first two rounds? His punches are very compact and very powerful. Yeah, uh, cut him. I don't know if it was a headbutt or not. But got a little cut in his arm. And another big straight right hand by Soto. Yeah, Soto has found a home for that for that punch. And you look at the body type of Soto, it's it's very compact. It's, it's the kind of uh, phys physique where you expect punches with a lot of leverage, uh, and especially to the body, and he's showing us that. And Soto's also showing us some nice footwork. He's not just constant pressure. He, he gets in and out, he lands the heavy shots, then he bounces out of range. And he showed that against Acosta. Nice short right hook on his way out. Boy, throwing everything with a purpose, everything with malice. And a ton of confidence. Oh, so quick from distance. So far, Elwin Soto has looked the part here through the first two rounds as the champ. Guys, let's look back at some of that action from the second round. The jab and the right hand fell short, but it did not Heno back. Heno blocked that shot, but it still had an effect because there was so much power on that right cross. And then Soto gets right into range and works the body with the left. He kind of touches with the jab just to get in range, and then once he's in close, he unleashes the, the hard shots to the body and head. Yeah. 
I'm not fluent in Spanish, but I'm fluent in body language. I'm fluent in how a voice sounds, and his corner does not seem happy with him right now. I think they're excited. I mean, you know, the, the, the emotions are high. Yeah, they're I mean, more excited than disappointed right now. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 obviously they want more. Maybe they're seeing opportunities that Soto missed. Maybe they're thinking, hey, you could have had this guy out of there in the second round. He could go home early. Um, but I think Soto's doing a great job. I mean, it was a, it was a, a close. And oh, oh, there's that right. I mean, he's found a home for the right hand. Um, the, the opening round was competitive, but the second round, it, it was all soda. Well, Dougie Fresh Beto is telling me that exactly what you just said is what they said in Spanish. Really? Yes. See, I don't speak Spanish, but I speak boxeo. <laughs> Beto, Beto will you tell go. you that. <laughs> <laughs> this round a little bit more controlled than round number two. Beto, you got something for us? Yeah, the corner of Soto is really exciting. He has a Cuban coach that he's worked with since the amateurs, and that Cuban coach gets animated. You ever been around Cuban coach? You know. Oh, yes. Habla con las manos. <laughs> no doubt, Beto. Okay, and now Soto and Heno fighting in, shots, a, in a phone booth. Yeah. He's taking those shots very well, too. Yeah, courageous stuff from Heno. He was forced into the... Uh, the corner, he, he was up against the ropes. He was taking hard shots to the body and head, and now he's firing back with uppercuts that allowed him to get off those ropes. And now they're, I mean, it's phone booth warfare in the center of the ring. This might not be the best fight for Heno right here, though, because Soto is doing his best work in the inside. I think Heno feels that he needs to, to earn some respect, though. Approaching a minute to go here in this third round. A really good spirited start to this our main event tonight and maybe the more mature fighter maybe even the more battle-tested fighter uh, in Heno he wants to test to see if, if Soto is as effective backing up as he is coming forward some aggressive fighters are only effective when they're allowed to come forward and when you push them back on their heels they're not as effective it's getting hit now yeah. getting through the ground Lamont Roach Jr. here at ringside. And is that going to count? It's right going to count. They're calling that a knockdown? Wow. wow. I can't wait to see that one again. It might be legit. Right. If mean, it Hen was, it was quick. Yeah, Hanno was landing. And there's, there's blood from the nostrils. You just see a, a, another uppercut jerk the head back of Soto. Oh, Ooh. big right hand by Soto. Oh. And now these two just exchanging. Power. This is a brilliant round. Oh, what a fun round. A and I round can't wait here. to watch the replay to see how significant that knockdown was by Hino on Soto. I'm really anxious to get both of your thoughts right here. And maybe it was, I got to see it from another angle. So he misses, so he's off balance right here. And then there's a left that lands kind of on okay. the ear. I mean, listen, he went down from a punch. I don't know how hard that punch was. What happened, Soto wound up and missed with a huge right haymaker, kind of threw himself off balance, had all his left on, all his weight on his left uh, foot. So he misses, and then he goes down. Okay, well. It's an iffy, it, listen, dude, it's, it's an iffy call. Yeah, due to technicality, if a punch lands and a fighter falls without any tripping or anything, it should be a knockdown. Right. All right, Beto, you got something for us? Yeah, Heno, who is he? He's from the bad area of the Philippines. I was, Ryan Sangali, our good friend, actually wrote a story about him a couple years ago for Ring TV. He was fighting in the Barangay amateur fights. Basically, coach, they were smokers in somebody's backyard. That's how he learned to box. I was talking with Sean Gibbons, you know, Viva Sean from Manny Pacquiao Promotions. He said, Heno has that it factor. You're going to love him. Well, so far, he has been tough, and he has taken everything that Soto can deliver and has. 
tell you what, Hino has some nice technique for a guy who made his bones, got his start in boxing and, and backyard brawls. Well, he has turned this one into very much a brawl, and now he's very much back in it after the first two rounds where I thought Soto looked really good. Lamont, what do you make? I think Hino is turning the tide right now, even though Soto is still firing like he was from the beginning. Um, Hino is getting the best of those exchanges from the last round on, on to now. The round continues after getting the boxing glove fixed. feel guys the energy in here was you know the way they set the pace in the first round the energy just immediately picked up you know how I was talking about that that short squat fire plug physique of Soto um, his, his main defense is just keeping his, his hands up high and that's good for blocking like jabs and punches from the outside but the way he squares up with those broad shoulders and that chest he, he's open for uppercuts on the inside, and, and Hino discovered that in the very first round. Of yeah. Boom, right down the middle. That's a beautiful one-two combination from Hino. Dougie Fresh, I think you're onto something. I think Hino's realized that the closer he gets, the better he can land and the less he takes. Yeah, on paper it didn't look like the fight for him, but right. he had to make a decision in the third round because Soto was really bullying him, pushing him up against the ropes. And he just decided, you know what, I'm, I'm going to push this guy back on his heels and I'm going to stay on the inside and I'm going to earn some respect. And that choice led to a knockdown and basically evening this fight up on the scorecards. And this round is anybody's round. <laughs> this is a tough one to score because they're going back and forth. Good straight right hands, two of them in fact for Soto. He backs up Hino onto the ropes. Now in control of the exchange for a moment. And Hino right back at Soto. Yeah, he answers every time Soto lands a, a heavy shot or a heavy combination. And by the way, I think Soto needs more combinations. in the final 10 seconds. And will that be enough to win that particular round? We will find out. Boy, what a good main event thus far. Fight with Breast Cancer was an inspiration to me both in and out of the ring. Now I'm teaming up with the American Cancer Society to help defeat this disease in honor of my mom as the first national ambassador for real men wear pink. Like hundreds of men across the country, I'm stepping up to take on breast cancer. It's my biggest fight yet, and I want to win it. But we need your support. Make a donation today at menfightingbreastcancer.org. I certainly want to be a big supporter of that, menfightingbreastcancer.org. Real men wear pink. Breast cancer and all the different kinds of cancers, just awful. All right, welcome back to our main event. And the coach, Dougie Fresh, Doug Fisher, editor-in-chief of Ring Magazine, Lamont Roach Jr., world title contender, fighting November 9th. He's with us here at ringside. And of course, uh, Beto Duran with all the great insights and information from both uh, fight camps throughout the night. All right, round number five of 12. Are you surprised at how even this oh. fight has been? Good uppercut. Guys, either one? I'm not surprised. Nope. Like I said, these guys are, are legitimate junior lightweight standouts. Soto is ranked number five in the world by Ring Magazine. He just won a world title. Hino is the more mature fighter at age 27. Um, he's, he's earned his way up the, the top of the WBO ladder. He's the WBO mandatory. So he's entered this fight with a lot of confidence. He's ranked number seven rated 108 pound fighter. So I was expecting a heck of a fight. 
I bet what he got. And the corner of the Mexican is telling him, put combinations. They feel like Hendo, the Filipino, is getting tired. They said he's been throwing a lot of punches. They want more combination from the champ. But, Doug, in that corner between rounds, there was three different voices. They were talking over each other, and you saw Soto looking around like, okay, who am I listening to right now? Is this a bit of confusion in that red corner. Is that a bad thing, Lamont, when there's more than one voice between rounds? Yeah, I think so. If uh, everyone's not on the same accord, yeah, I think so. Uh, if the same, if those three voices are pretty much giving you the same, around the same information, then that's better. But um, that should be a little confusing, especially to Soto in a tough fight. If they're telling Soto to put his punches together more, that's good advice. That's good. Just hopefully he heard that. He's not doing it yet, and I'm seeing it from Heno. Heno is sneaking that left to the ground. Real good. Might not be hurting Soto now, but he'll pay for the round. We've seen several fighters tonight as these two continue. Oh, wow! The head snap back of Soto. Yeah, Soto was getting greedy. He was landing some big head shots. And by the way, I think he's head hunting a little bit. And he backed Heno to the ropes, but he squared up and stayed right in range of Heno. He wasn't doing that in the first two rounds, and he paid the price. He, he caught a one-two combination. Lamont, how hard is it when you have a game plan and then you decide, I'm going to scrap it and brawl? Uh, I'm gonna say it's hard. It's um, it's different. Like when you get in there, you do have a game plan, and then sometimes things go you know left or right or up or down. And you just sometimes you really just gotta fight. It's all about adjustments and adapting to your opponent. We've seen both of these two men adapt and throw and entertain through now. fights like this. Love it. This is a really good fight. We're going to keep it right here. Look back at some of the action from that fifth round. That was not an easy round to score, guys. That was a right uppercut landed by Heno. Comes over the top with the right. There's another uppercut. There's uppercuts from both sides. Heno landing, snapping the head back of Soto. Soto also had his moments in that round as well. You wonder what the judges are appreciating, the accuracy on the inside from, from Heno or Soto's aggression being able to back Heno up to the ropes. I, I couldn't decide. I had it even. So I've got Soto ahead by two points, but it could easily be an even fight, or you can even, I, I can even see Heno up by one point. All right, I think we've got some information on something going on in the corner of Heno. Uh, Beto, what do you got? Yeah, there's a good cut, a little mouse building, and I just spoke with the referee, Jerry Cantu. He said it happened earlier in the fight, and it was a result of a punch. And Heno's dad, actually, Doug, is the one who taught him the sport of boxing. His dad, Leopard, was 2-4 and four in the Philippines. This fight is very personal because this can change his entire career and also his lifestyle for the family and a lot of the family members. Thank you, Beto, very much. You don't think about lives changing when you're watching a fight. But the trickle-down effect is emotional a lot of times. Soto's issue here is like, um, like Doug said, like in the beginning, he was working the body when he got the inside. Now he's waiting. Yeah, he's waiting. He's looking to counter punch. It's almost like there was a reversal of roles or slight reversal. And um, and he's good. I mean, he's a good counter punch. I mean, it was a counter hook that, that earned him his WBO title. Um, but you, you can't get away from the basics. And what he was doing early in the fight was working well, where he was at least pawing with his jab before letting loose the power shots to the, the, the body and head. Now it looks like he's head hunting. He's just content to, to temporarily back Heno up, but the thing is, is Heno fights back every time, and Heno's being real smart about his, his, his punch placement. Halfway through this sixth round of a possible 12, Soto the champ in the red around his waist, and then a counter by Heno. Heno right now is the more accurate, and in my opinion, the more effective puncher. 
He doesn't look like a, a powerful puncher in there. He doesn't have a high KO percentage, but he's snapping back the head and, and twisting the head of, of uh, Soto. Yeah, Soto, he's getting into that area where he's starting to sleepwalk a little bit. He might be getting a little bit of, uh, groggy from these jabs and these uppercuts and these nice combinations. Well, they definitely take their toll and add up, huh? Yeah, they're taking their toll and Soto's not moving his head at all, so that's making it easier for him to hit him. He's just sitting there with his hand. Yeah, he, sends, he, he squares up in front of Heno and just puts the hands up, and uh, that's not going to protect him from these uppercuts. And Heno's good with the uppercuts. Gets the right range, bends at the knee, and he, and he looks right where he wants those punches to land. He stays very focused, even when um, under pressure from Soto. I think this has been a good round, good round six for Heno. Some eye-catching right hands landed by Soto late in this round. I don't know if it's enough to, to win the win the round, at least not on my scorecard. All right, we are officially halfway home. And don't forget, coming up in nine days from tonight, we have the preview card right here on the zone. And which fight are you most looking forward to out of these four? Dougie. You're asking me? Oh, yeah. Betamir Melikusiev out of Uzbekistan. <laughs> Man, an incredible body puncher, uh, a light heavyweight prospect. Marco Perry Bond, that dude is a, uh, a he's a veteran. I mean, that guy has, has fought world champions. I don't know how many fights. I don't have box rec in front of me, but he's got at least 30 fights. And I think Betamir has like, what, this is maybe his third pro fight? Crazy. And, and if you want those fights, you better have the zone. And then, of course, the main card later that same evening, Blair, the Flair Cobbs, dynamic. And then, of course, the co-main with King Rai and then Canelo at the top. Don't forget Estrada and Spaz. And that's the grudge match. Yes. And two unbeaten fighters with a, a clash of, of styles and personalities. You're looking forward to that one, huh? Yep. I can't wait to get to Las Vegas. A dream week for me is a week of golf, which I'll be doing, and then Vegas at the end. Sounds good. Yeah. You're living the life, Coach. I'm trying. I'm trying. <laughs> Every day is a grind. Round number seven. If you're just joining us, where the heck have you been? It's been a great night of fights. This is our main event, Soto in the red with all kinds of stuff on his trunks. And then Heno from the Philippines in the black and red trunks and red and black shoes. And as expected, it is a tit for tat. This is a hotly contested championship bout. Lamont Roach Jr. joining us here at commentary for the main event. Again, you don't want to miss his WBO Junior Lightweight title fight in Fresno, November 9th. Mel Herring is waiting you. And physically, how are you feeling right now? I'm feeling good, man. I feel I'm in great shape right now. Uh, we're just coming down the day, just getting sharper, staying fit, staying ready, and uh, getting great sparring. Now, head out to good shots. On Soto as he continues the volume punching. Heno, yeah, the challenger, is the volume puncher and the combination puncher. I think he's the more accurate puncher, at least in recent rounds. And uh, it, Soto is still bringing the power, and he's bringing these eye-catching punches, particularly the right hand. So you wonder what the uh, the officials, judges, will consider the most important thing in this fight. We never know what that's going to be. Yeah, I hope they don't just reward Soto for pushing Hino back. Because, yeah, Hino, you know, Hino allows himself to go to the ropes because he's able to score really well off those with his back against the ropes. And then he moves off the ropes. Oh, beautiful right hand landed by Hino. And even though Hino doesn't carry the power, his, all his shots are going to pop. Kind of deceptive, deceptive pop. It doesn't look like he would really knock anybody out, but it would not surprise me if Soto went down from one of these shots. Hino's got a good foundation. He's got good balance. He bends at the knees with these punches, particularly the uppercuts. Um, and he knows when to let those hands go, so he times the punches right. That's how he got the knockdown. That was good timing. Yeah. 
And now they continue to fight in close. Both men very, very comfortable. Clearly fighting this style. All right, now we're getting into crunch time. We're going to keep it here. Seven rounds. Right now, does anybody have the clear-cut favorite in your mind? I don't, especially after that round. I've scored the last two rounds for Heno. I had the fifth round even. Um, and Soto I had winning rounds one, two, and four. But in round three, he had the knockdowns. It's a 10-8 round against him. I got it 66-66. I got an even fight. With five rounds to go. Lamont, how are you seeing the fight right now? I'm seeing the fight even, too. It could be either way or not. Um, any judge's scorecard, but Soto is definitely, um, you know, losing momentum. We hear fighters say it all the time. We hear corners say it all the time. Don't leave it in the judge's hands. Is that easier said than done? I mean, yeah, because we're in there, but um, once your corner beats it into you, you know you got to pick it up. And, um, but not just go and swing for the fences, but do what you have to do to secure it. All right, here we go. Both fighters right back to the middle of the ring, round number eight. Been a really fun night of fights, a great knockout by Angel Acosta, the same man who Soto beat earlier this year. I think Soto is looking for one of those shots to just drop it on him because he's just going to win. All right, loading up with one shot at a time. He needs to listen to his corner. Does he listen to that screaming, <laughs> even if it's from three different people? Focus in on whoever's um, passing out the knowledge. But whoever's saying combination punches and, and body shots, and that was a nice uh, left to the body that Soto like that. landed. That's how it needs to work. Yeah. That, to work. that was the best combination that Soto's had yet. The thing is, he needs to get out of the way. When he lands like three or four punches, get out of range or move to the side. When he stands right in front of Hino, and Hino nails him every time. Yeah. You agree, Lamont? I agree. He's just giving it right back. I mean, especially when he does something good, he gives it right back. He doesn't move his head. He's sitting there getting hit. His corner is telling him to press. Heno? Oh, so too. Okay. And now Heno, good combination well, I'll on tell you Soto. What, Soto can't just stand there. He can't. If you're not going to press, then move. I was kind of wondering what he was doing. Something has to be moving on your body at all times. If your fist ain't moving, your feet need to be moving. If your feet aren't moving, your head and upper body better be moving. Something. And if none of that's moving, it's going to get hit. hit. You're getting hit. <laughs> <laughs> if nothing's moving, you're a heavy bag. <laughs> One minute to go here in round number eight. Anybody's ball game. Hanno getting those nice little clean inside shots to connect on Soto. You see Soto lands these shots that make noise, and they are hard punches, and they are scoring punches, even though they're one at a time. And, and, and Soto, in, in each round, Soto will have these moments where he pushes the challenger to the ropes. And not every judge appreciates that in and of itself, but some judges do. They'll look at just forward marching aggression as effective aggression. That was a nice hook from, from Soto. Boy, now Hannah's starting to feel the energy a little bit. Both men appear to be in really good physical condition. That's how he needs to punch. Like he needs to get out the way and his head Boy, look at the quick hands by oh, Hanna. Oh, my goodness. Oh, wow. Wait a second. So Soto, well after the bell, didn't seem to bother Hanna at all. What a fun end to that eighth round. I was about to score it for Soto, and I thought, well, maybe Heno stole the round with that flurry. I went ahead with Soto. I think Soto did more work during the round, but it's a very close fight and a very close round. Very hard to score. Yeah, that round could have been really good. The, the one two, one two combinations, and he's leaning on him. There's a left hook landing for Soto. He misses with the left hook, and Heno just unleashes like a four punch, one two, one two combination. And I think that frustrated Soto, 
and, and that's why we saw the late the late stuff from, from the Mexican champion. Yeah, I think you are dead on, and I think these last three rounds are going to be something special. Here we go, anybody's ball game. Dougie Fresh has this thing smack dab, just about even. So it's three rounds to decide the title. And who leaves tonight victorious in our main event on Thursday Night Fights? Here is your up to the minute scorecard for Dougie. It's very close. I scored that last round for Soto, so he's up by one point. But, you know, Hino could have legitimately stole that round. This is, one, this is one of those fights, Coach, where, like, going into the final 20 seconds of each round, it's kind of like up for grabs, you know? Like, both guys have their moments, and, like, whoever lands uh, most impressively before that bell can often steal the round. Luan, do you, do you as a fighter have a clock in the back of your head? Uh, I try not to, because that's when, like, you're thinking at a time, and, uh, it's just my son. Um, you get a feel for when the end of the round is coming, then you have to pick it up or, you know, that should kick in. Um, especially when that 10 seconds sign, though, I don't know what you got to do if you think you're the end of the round is still. Well, you know, or if you're having a really good round and you, can, and you hear the bell cave, then you can protect your lead. Yeah. Back off a little bit. The crowd doesn't always like that. Great, great. That's a, it's a smart strategy. The crowd's not even like that. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and now Soto trying to follow up the good combination and Hanno continues to do the the move where he ducks down and keeps his head down and Soto ever the good sport refusing to throw punches at that point yeah I'd like to see some uppercuts from Soto oh now Hanno is paying Soto back because Soto's been leaning on Hanno all fight and Hanno's saw an opportunity to lean on, on top of Soto nice body work for the challenge We are seeing some choice body shots for Soto as well. See, both guys are doing that. Both guys are doing that. And the ref is not going to anyone because they're both like, you know, right. he's pushing down in his head. Does that wear a fighter down? I think so. Has anyone done that to you? Uh, no. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> Iffy blow right there. It was kind of like on a break. Oh, and it is. My goodness. Nice right hooks from the challenger. You know, this action, a lot of this action has been, it's getting kind of uh, rough and, and tumbling there, but this action has been so even, so much, um, so evenly contested on the inside, I've actually forgotten that Hino is a southpaw. Because they're so close, it's kind of like the stances don't even matter. It's a great point. All right, round number nine coming to an end. It's another very close, very close round with a flurry at the end. That has kind of been how these two Fighters have done it better. What do you have? And the red corner is going and letting them know you're the champion. Fight like one. And after trying to get to the motivation side, you guys were talking about the pushing down of the head. This corner told them, look, the referee warned you. Soto told them, well, I don't want to get a point taken away. I'm like, keep doing it because he's doing it to you. It's getting ugly. It's getting dirty. And it's a championship fight. Like, they're motivating him. They're using mind games with the uh, fighter from San Felipe, not Mexicali. You do whatever you have to do at this point to get the job done it's not about style points anymore boys it's about now outpointing his opponent we're now through nine rounds it's gut check time and if you're soto you can't assume that you're ahead on the scorecards not as with as many punches as he's taken per round you cannot assume that he's got the lead or and i think it's coming yeah i'm gonna get you in front okay box all right, the referee bringing them together, and then both men, I think, have really grown a mutual respect for one another over the course of the first nine rounds of this fight. I agree, Coach. And likewise for him. You know, he, he can't think that he's in control of this fight because he's landing as many punches as he's landing. He's also taking some hard shots, eye-catching shots, and he's being backed up by the champion. I mean, he has to, to, to really let it all hang out in this championship round, the final three. Oh, Hanno caught Soto, but just like that, that quick Soto right back on top of Hanno in the corner. Big shot right in front of his hair. 
ringside and just the thud and the how hard they both throw their punches is incredible. And Soto showed us in his title victory that he retains his power late in the fight. And he's showing it. You can hear the difference between their punches. And Soto has found a home for that left hook to the punch. Some head and upper body movement from Soto. He said, hey, why not? You know what? A little bit of defense here in the 10th round. And now some angles from, from Soto and that, and that footwork that at the start of the show and the start of this fight, I said Soto had, you know? That's, that's what impressed me against Acosta is that he knew when to attack and he knew when to stick and move. Well, Lamont, what would you do if your opponent kept holding your head down like that? Can look to the referees. The referees, you got to know that the referees not gonna save you. But um, you got to make an adjustment, man. And, um, you know, make them think that you're gonna put your head down and come up with a shot. Cause you know, if he's pushing your head, then his hands not there. Oh, big right hand, big right hand. Hanno for a second actually stepped under the rope, and now Soto starting to unleash on Hanno. He needs to go to the body. And Hanno, as he seems to do every single time. Soto. There's a lot of heart from Hed Keno. Um, there's a lot of experience in his 19 pro fights. And there's there's ring savvy there. He's he's crafty and cagey. It's not easy just to zero in on and beat into submission. He's, he's got the heart to fight back, but he's also got the ring generalship and the savvy to evade punches. I think Soto is only pushing his head down, though, is because Hendo is putting his head down as well. All right, round number 10 in the books, and this is as close as you will ever see a fight, certainly here on Thursday Night Fight. As we listen in, the red corner. It looks like they're talking with urgency. He's saying there's two more rounds left. You better, you better pick it up. You speak boxeo too. <laughs> and, and, yeah, we thought Teddy Atlas was high strong. <laughs> Forget about it. Better, what are they saying over there? They're saying that Los Tucanes song that DJ Suzy is playing is so loud I can't hear anything. So shout out to Tijuana. <laughs> it's all DJ Suzy's fault. We, we, yeah, we know what they're saying. They're saying you got six minutes to retain yeah. your title. But I agree with you, Lamont. That 10th round was a clear round for Soto, and I've scored rounds 8, 9, and 10. Rounds 8 and 9, not so clear. Those were close rounds that I edged to the champion, but round 10, it looked like he's begun to take over. It looks like Hino is beginning to lose steam. Yeah. But he remains cagey. He remains defiant. He's tired, but the challenger's will hasn't broken, and he's still landing those shots, those uppercuts. I think it would be very, very difficult to prepare for. I think that body shot's stepping. Yeah. And Good. That's what he needs to do. If he put his head down, he's a punch. Soto stood up and looked at the referee. The referee wasn't doing anything. Because the referee isn't saying anything. That's why you should punch. Yeah. If the referee's not saying break, you should be punching. Let your hands go. And, and Soto needs to experiment with some uppercuts. Boxing 101 from Lamont Roach Jr. If the referee's not saying anything, punch. And now Soto is punching with power. Whenever Hanno ducks down like that, you know, you can, you can catch him on the temple, you know, with a hook or a cross, or you can hit him with an uppercut. Or you can reach around and get him to the body, and that, just like that. Especially that, because Hanno is not firing when he's, when he's down that low. He's just looking to either get a break or look for an opening. Careful about that. I think a 
another ref would have warned him by now about the holding and hitting. Uh, and a uh, really spurred ref for docking the point. See, it's working for him. Yeah, it is working for him. Yeah, that time he was able to connect right as Hedo's head came back up to fight. Stop, 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 stop. The referee's been very, very busy thus far in this main event fight. Break out of the break! The buzzer, the break! Soto bleeding from the nose, and it's a trickle of blood. He's still eating those uppercuts, but he's definitely imposing himself physically on the challenger. The challenger has slowed down, and he's feeling the fatigue. <laughs> Inside 10 seconds now of our 11th round as our main event will indeed go to a 12th and final round here in Indio. We're going to keep it right here and boys, this round could be the round that decides everything in this fight. What do you think, Levon? We'll start with you. I think so. Um, you know, it's slowing down, though. And Soto is not necessarily sensing how much he's slowing down. Uh, but if he does this round, I think he'll have a pretty good round. I feel like Soto, he's come on in yeah. his late rounds. Yeah. And he's showing that character once again and that stamina and that conditioning. And he's also showing us a few more wrinkles in these late rounds that he didn't show us in the middle rounds. I haven't scored a round for Pino since round seven, but rounds eight and nine could have been scored for the challenger. So Soto can't be overconfident going into this final round. There you I have a 106. Yeah, 106 to 102 going into the final round. I have Soto up by four points. All right, here we go. Round number 12. We have instruction from the red corner. Benno, what were they giving Soto? Go for it, go for it, go for it. Can you knock him out? How bad do you want it? Dale. And now both men standing in the middle of the ring. Who will have enough? What a battle. this round like he was going to once again try to push the bull back on his heels. I don't know if he has the, the stamina or the, or the physical strength at this point in the fight to do that, but he's trying. And you can see Soto taking deep breaths as well. He's really it. It's been a tough fight. You know, a lot of guys get an easy first place. Soto, he had, a, he had a mandatory challenger waiting for him, and he went right into that mandatory challenge. Just like Jamel Heron. He's trying to get a tough title win over Masayuki Ito, and he's fighting his mandatory. You're the number one contender, right? Yes, yeah, so it's not going to be easy. Well, we're excited to watch you in a couple of weeks. I bet you are. You sound so cool kind of like you all the time. But I know you save it for the room. We are approaching a minute to go here in this 12th and final round. And I'll be honest with you, I don't know who is winning this fight. Ooh, nice right hands. Oh, maybe a delayed effect, maybe a slip. I don't think it was a slip, but you know what? You know, it's tired. He is really weak right now. Referee Matt Clare, that was not a knockdown. It's a little slip. Good call. Inside 30 seconds, they have given it everything they have, and you can't blame them for having legs that are like those of a baby giraffe at this point. And now Soto just unleashing 
trying to win this round in the final 15 or 20 seconds. Soto had a what a We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we'll have the decision for you in our main event. Is it going to be Soto or Heno? What a battle for 12 rounds. The decision when we come back. the zone we don't think you should have to illegally stream fights on your computer and get a virus that's why i'm gonna blow up this computer we also don't think you should have to pay a lot of money to pay-per-view to watch a fight at home that's why i'm blowing up my house the zone is blowing up the fight game stream over 100 fight nights a year without the pain of pay-per-view bye bye pay-per-view <laughs> Well, for me, speed is everything. Power comes from speed. So at any given weight class, if you're faster than your opponent, you avoid their punches and you hit back harder. So everywhere I go, even in the smallest details of my life, I'm constantly looking at how fast I am. I don't think you realize what you've walked into. Mark my words, that motherfucker is going down. This is the moment you've all been waiting for. This fight is a majority draw. I think we got a rematch. I think it's what the people want. I'm going to murder that dude, bro. <laughs> I finish you off and end your career. Golden Boys Thursday Night Fight, presented by DAZN, is brought to you by DAZN. Stream over 100 fight nights a year without the pain of pay-per-view. And by Ducate, the official peer of boxing. And brought to you by The Ring Magazine, the Bible of boxing since 1922. Pick up the latest edition and subscribe today at ringtv.com. All right, welcome back to Fantasy Indio, California, the Zone Thursday Night Fights. What a main event we just had, Elwin Soto and Heno. And it's time to find out who win, who won our main event. Let's send it up to Jeremiah. Ladies and gentlemen, after 12 rounds of boxing, Let's give these two warriors a big round of applause. And now we go to the judges' scorecard. Judge Zachary Young sees the belt 114-113. Judges Max DeLuca and Patrick Morley have the bout the same 115-112. For your winner by unanimous decision, ladies and gentlemen, and still the WBO Life Flyweight Champion of the World, the Pony Pride of Maggie Kelly, La Pulga, Edwin Southall. Boy, there was a second there where I think many of us thought that that belt was not going home with Elwin Soto. But it was close, it was tight, and that's exactly what we thought it was going to be. Yeah, Soto had to sweat it out. That uh, that scorecard from Zachary Young, 114-113, that could have easily been for Heno. Um, it, it basically means he scored seven rounds um, out of the 12 for Soto, and uh, it was uh, just a one-point fight because yeah. of the knockdown. The other judges had an eight rounds to four for Soto. All right, Lamont, 